Hold on. Yeah, it's all good. I love this. Let's get it. Right. Hey, you are with us today. We are with the man, the myth, and the legend, Young Ill. I am Fine Wine. I'm Innocence. Hey, man, we appreciate y'all tuning in to the Mortal Love Podcast. Hey, man, can you tell the people who you are, you know what I'm saying, and what you, yeah. and what you do? You know, Ice Pack Ill Chill, who you know, Cooler. I get paid to make a fool and... Uh, I could curse. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. I expect you to chill. You know, cooler nigga. I get paid to make a fool of niggas. Um, who is this? Nigga? World renowned battle rapper from St. Louis, Missouri. You know, pretty much just like top tier, all of that when it comes to battle rapping. One of the big three from St. Louis, just as to say a little, a little bit of the least. And you pretty much research the rest, man. I'm like the real deal. I'm that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, so how did you get into you know the battle rapping? Uh, battle rap, um, that's like kind of like that was one of the that was one of the elements of the culture I took on early, like just in writing. Um, one of my early influences was Tef Poe, so like freestyling in his mom's basement. I used to mm-hmm. battle his little brother. That's how we started writing. Who won? Uh, back then it was like back and forth. We was actually in a group. That was our first rap. Our okay. first rap group. <laughs> He could freestyle better than me yeah. at first. He could freestyle better than me. This Mario, he could freestyle better than me, but he couldn't write better than me. So we used to go back in the room, like we would give each other like 30 minutes. My little brother and everybody would give each other like 30 minutes. I go in the room, he'd go in the room. And I always kind of kill him when we had to prepare. He always lose. If he watching, he saved now and stuff, you know. So, <laughs> so, yeah, he, you know, you yeah. know you lost. No, he knows. But yeah, you yeah. was real good. You got saved, man. You left the group, Mario. Who knows how far we could have been? <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you decide what type of content you make? Um, right. As far as battle rap is concerned, or with any type of art. Uh, with any type of art, it's always gonna be creative, and it's always gonna be organic with me. Like, I'm gonna try to make sure I create from a place that's genuine mm-hmm. like whatever I'm talking about or whatever my thoughts are I'm going to cater to you know what I'm saying I'm going to go there first I'm not going to cater to the ear of the listeners I'm going to do so as much as to kind of like get them something to listen to because yeah. I know it can't be one sided where I'm just you know but doing what I want to you, you be in your moments of uh, feeling like alright this is what I'm going through anyway Yeah. and let me I got to let this out with this and you yeah. about to get some of this Mm-hmm. So what's your t- favorite type of music like to make or you know what I'm saying? My favorite type of music to make I'm well balanced man, I can't even lie. Uh in creating and recording, I like to make all different types of music, you know. More so with live instruments though, that's my main that's one of my main right. uh my main things. I always like live instruments if I could do that. And then if uh I'm playing uh, I play the piano, I play the keys a little bit. Okay. Um and the drums, please and the drums. I play those enough to like, I play the keys by ear, and I play the drums. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't know that? You don't even know. Well, 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 I don't know. Well, I talk talented, mm-hmm. bro. So, you know, gauging on the experience, like starting off, because you know, like y'all were, you Hitman, Averse, y'all were the pioneers of bringing the Midwest, you know what I'm saying, to yeah. present. So, what has that experience been like from now, like from then to now? What Like, what does that look like? Like, how was that struggle? And what yeah. did you make it through? Uh, it's just like a challenge, but it's still, the fact that it's still up and running, but the beginning stages to now, it's a big transition, but it's all progress. That's what I see it as. Mm-hmm. The starting stages were real humble, if I could say the least, like, it's real humble, to the point where St. Louis wasn't really the, St. Louis wasn't the starting point for it to, be so big and large. Facts, facts, facts. facts. You know, so we could, we started here, but from that, it just it was a it really was so influential, man. It's bigger than us at the time. That's why I think we weren't really able to expect how large it scaled yeah, and went yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta be ready for the growth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be ready for the growth. Man. But I knew something special was going on the whole time. I knew we was part of something special, but how long it'll be going on? That's crazy, like, for it to still be going on now. Yeah. It's a whole new industry. How hard was it for, like, y'all to book battles? Back like, then? I, like, you know what I'm saying, out north, you know what I'm saying, or up in New York and stuff like that. At first, that wasn't even an interest to ours. That's what I had to bring to the forefront with um, 
I had to bring that to the forefront where, oh, I was reminding him, like, bro, we weren't really in hopes of going, venturing outside our region because we were just putting the cameras on and there was enough guys here where we were interested, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's all that was, bro. I promise you we didn't go seek out Lux or Mook or say, hey, guys, look at us. Yeah. But if I could go back to my space and my inboxes, we built so much of a wave that they like, you know what I'm saying, re reached out to me. Then Fox in uh, the jungle where Conceited was at Harvest and all them guys reached out to us. Then Lux sent us a Lions Den DVD. Just a place like we were part of the culture, but we were just like endangered species because they not did not know that this shit was around. Mm -hmm. But it always was because if you look at the Detroit scene, the Chicago scene, even the St. Louis scene, it was always battle rappers. Yeah. But the East Coast was the only way that where the cameras could be or where people get to expose it before YouTube. That's right. But I got OGs in St. Louis that battle rap that I heard about myths of them battling. Mm -hmm. Where like, dang, oh, they went, they went like eight rounds. I could go to name all people that I done. That's so I knew it was around, but we were the first part of people to bring it to the forefront yeah. and give people the chance to say, hey, you know, okay, let's listen to them from Chicago or mm -hmm. Indiana or Memphis or, you know, Chicago, you know, basically all the Midwest cities. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what was one of your hardest battles or what's the hardest region to battle in? My and hardest why? battle, looking at the other day, Hitman Holler was my hardest battle because that was my most evenly matched battle at mm -hmm. the time of my career. And I had to put that together just looking at that battle. Uh, yeah, that was my most challenging battle and my most well-prepared battle at the time. You know, and that's mm -hmm. just all the, uh, every other battle. Man, I could tell you everybody's stress that I went through. Like, everybody I done battled, it's, it's almost over now. This shit is just like, I it, whatever somebody the best in, I've already seen probably somebody better than them. I've seen so many phases of different people. I only had 22 battles. I've had 22 battles. You feel me? So, you know, you, Damn, you I, I feel, I feel like way more. That's crazy. Because my views limit is yeah. up. I got, I got a good consistency. You know, somebody brought that to my attention. It was a battle where I proposed some stats. You know, I, and they had tripled my amount of battles. But when it came down to average views, you know, didn't transition. I'm not like everyone else. That's what people have to do. Look at the statistics. Statistically, people like to click on my battle. More content. That's all. Yeah, I, this, this, I said, no, nah, we'll let you know if we need it. I reached out to a We reached out to all clothing lines. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been doing lately. It's partner trying to partner with different brands mm -hmm. and co-brand like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you put together enough people in the right network, shoot. Mm -hmm. At that point, everybody must find everybody bread going. Like let's 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 make let's do this one right. So mm -hmm. how would you if somebody wanted to reach out to a big brand to, you know, be a brand ambassador for them, how would you say what would be a way to go about that? Uh first I say and it's genuine when you wanna get to know about that company, you know, see where they at, see what what market they trying to reach, and then that's a you know what market they already have reached, and then if the market that you have access to really have a uh, value to them, it's like we got the hip hop market. We also have, you know, you got battle rap is like a lot of it. it's a large market. It's not just one dimensional as far as any type of you know, race or demographic, it's right. broad. So you got that open door. But if any other, wasn't that what I just say, you research them, and then you always looking to offer some type of service, and you um, like almost do it for free. Mm -hmm. Like you do as much as you can for free, and give it all, give give them nothing to say no about. Like I just did it. Until I get a less such type of value in which I feel like it's built up, I say any brand, I'll go to them and say this, hey, if they have an on-star brick and mortar store, i say, hey, i like to uh, do a photo shoot in your merchandise. And as a matter of fact, to make it convenient, we can do it in-store with some items off the rack and return them when we're done, you know, just for us to be a promotional shoot. Mm 
like this. And I'll do that with high-end stores that have designer clothes. Right now, not so much, but once my Instagram page says uh, an astronomical amount of impressions, then I go to any store. And I have confidence when I have a one-page theme brand out. It's just about numbers. If their Instagram page doesn't show their numbers, then it's an easy fix. Yes, you can tell me, no, that's fine. But I know I have more value than you when it comes to internet presence. I know my impressions. I can see mine. I know you want to show me yours. But I know that. I know it's a good. I know I got to transition. I, it's I mutual, know I'm valuable. It's mutual beneficial. Mm -hmm. You can do it now. So I'm sending you this olive branch out. And when it come back down the line, I'm going to have to charge you. Right. Straight up, bro. That's just like the streets. Yeah, I just how I run it now. The streets taught me everything. That's how I run it, these niggas. I just talk it real politically correct so they can respect me as such. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's just like some street stuff. A nigga gonna gank you if they can. So, hey, you get over. You make sure you get some out of everything. I'm gonna make sure I get some out of you. If not, cool. At least I tried. <laughs> yep. Fuck them. Yeah, so, I mean, just on that line, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what do you think for an upcoming battle rapper, just anybody, you know what I'm saying? What to look out, what should you look out for? For up and coming battle rapper, and these are Jews, as long as you uh you already got your craft, you got your style, you got your man, for lack of better terms, your storyline, everything links out with you. Then you just wanna go ahead, man, invest in yourself. You wanna pick you a league that's independent. And you wanna go ahead and just start paying top tier battle rappers to battle you. And that's it. They're gonna say that you paid your way to the top. But it's not going to matter because you would have established your brand. Now, regardless of whether or not they, you know, whether or not they're going to say anything, that's exposure. That's what I would suggest to a new battle rapper because it's not the same as when I came in. It's oversaturated. It's thousands of battle rappers. It's thousands of leagues. Mm -hmm. Everybody put their focus on URL because that's the end goal. That's the fame. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But... You can straight pick up a lot of money out here, bro. So many of these, I couldn't even name them all. So I, I just tell them to focus on being independent as much as you can, and pick pick that uh you know pick that wave up independently. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. Don't don't limit yourself to one play. You got rent every month. Pay your rent every month with your battle money and start there. I bet you. I bet you get where you're supposed to be. Make that your goal. To make sure that they pay you enough to you to pay your rent up and your bills up until your next battle. Mm -hmm. As an up and coming battle rapper, start running your business like that. Don't work no job, man. Stop your job. When you book that right battle, you get you a battle for about $1,500, pay your bills up, get you a girl that's working, you know what I'm saying? You got time for you to travel and move around. If you're not ready to do that, you're not going to gain no good. No ground at this time now. It's different. It's I different. see I see okay. the dudes right now going traveling all over. I knew they doing it on their own dollar. They not making no money. They just hungry. I'm at this I'm not at the stage of game that I do that now. But back in back in uh when I was coming up, that's what I was doing. If that's what I had to do, that's what I would have did. And I was coming anywhere with six rounds. Anytime I battled it was six rounds. Niggas better be oh, right. You talking up. about one, two, three, four, five, six, right? No, I'm battling three rounds. Three. Oh, but okay. then it was always money on the line. So a nigga might say, Sud Def. Okay, I got right. another round. Another and where do bars come from? Hmm? Th well, I just told you. No, no tip. coming with six rounds. You bro. already prepared. You're going three. Then I got three in the cut. Yeah, I got three in the cut. See, I'm prepared. All right, you, anything I had with me. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had these with me, too. Yeah. Oh, you, I, I had this with me, too. Mm -hmm. That's so crazy. Like, back in the day, if... If you was in a battle for real, like you really freestyle mm -hmm. before you even um, wrote any riddance. So that was like, that's real for real when I was winning the most battles, when you freestyle. Then you, if somebody start reading they'd be like, hey, he got, he, he's spitting riddance. So I don't, this stuff is new, but it's a new culture. So that I adapted to the culture as it adapted, but I'm, a, I'm from the culture where you start, you was battling for all freestyle. And I was battling grown men since I was like 14, winning. I battled a dude named Misto on Fire Natural Bridge at Sub Zero Records. Outside, he damn near wanted to fight me. He was so grown, I was. I'm like, damn. Like, I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. <laughs> That's how he started. I was smashing him, and it was it was at Sub Zero Records.
It was Chicken Man. It was a uh, dang cheese, big cheese, Chicken Man, um, Fat Mo. These are names. These niggas are gonna remember. I, I know they gonna see it, but I was a kid and I was handling a grown man from the front round park, smashing this dude. Round, next round, go again. Let's go again. How long was that round? I don't know, it was freestyle. He was rapping way longer than me, all in my face, like trying to. I'm like, bro, you lost already. I don't know how many rounds I kept going. Somebody had to stop it, like. Dude, yeah, it's so, enough. No, no, you, you, know, you good, lost. bro. You got but it. But little dude right there, straight, he off. Like, Come here, man. Right, that's how I got my name. Like, everybody, after I smash somebody, I get all fans. The Palace. Back so, how you go with Man, man The Palace? Man, my first name was Illusion. I was in a rap group, and I was like, okay, that's weak as fuck. I was Ooh. like, motherfuckers used to be yeah, rapping. You probably like shit to the bottom. Like, yeah. <laughs> but look, people used to be battling me and thinking I all fucking flips and shit. I was like, man, that's a stupid ass name. It was always getting me killed there. Yeah. You know, like, John on me in the battle, man. I'm like, man, EOZ, then it just, I changed my name to EOZ. That was in like the seventh grade, eighth grade. Yeah. You feel me? My name was Illusion when I first started, like on some grade school weird ass shit, trying to, <laughs> trying to use big words. Then it went to EOZ. That was in high school. Mm -hmm. I got mixtapes with that. This shit is like so. I'm not proud of these beginnings. I was trying to tell y'all about like. Hey, this is for my career. Hey, hey, look, you grown, man. Bro, this dude. shit before my career jumped off. Like, <laughs> it was in high school. Cause like, I went to, uh, Right, man, what the too. fuck? You be like, what was I thinking, man? <laughs> so like, my name was Il Il Z in high school, and I was popular as fuck. Like, that's what everybody still called me. It was high school Il Z. So then the Il, boom, really young. I don't even know why people call me on Gil no more. It's Ice Pack Il. That's where the Ice Pack come from. Cause I, 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 I did it in a freestyle. I was like Ice Pack Il, chill. Who you know, cooler nigga. Oh, I. Like, I ain't you who you know, no cooler need. nigga. Dooler nigga. I go to war with a group of niggas. And that just came off the top. Now, that was in a thing called Mixtape Mondays that Bird oh, was having. Yeah. It was me, right. Hitman, this dude named Sosa. Everybody love him. Mm hmm. Man. Boy, hey, yeah, look, he been through the whole, whole life of just trying to figure out, like, hey, I got this, I got this, let me yeah. use the talents. Let me align this mug with the money. All right, cool. And yeah. every time growing. So yeah, now, now, you, now you're at that stage where you're just like, all right. I Have you ever lived outside of St. Louis? Mm-hmm. I lived in Houston. Okay. For a long period of time. Back in like 2012, moved down there with my manager. Stayed in Houston. I love Houston. I've been on and off from Houston since like 2008. Houston got some nice clubs. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of business down there. It's, it's like, the hottest fuck. Oh yeah. You more not treat your back in the sweat. Mm-hmm. No, Houston too hot. Yeah, but the women be just naked. Yeah, I love Houston. I do too. Shout out to them. Mm-hmm. So yeah. shout out to Acres Home, North Houston. That part. Mm -hmm. That part. Alright, so this part, you know what I'm saying? We call this the Spitfire, right? Spitfire. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's the first thing to come to your mind. You know what I'm saying? That's how you answer the question. So Okay. Is there anybody you would like to meet or work with? Mm -hmm. Yes. Go. Do I have to do the beat music? No, 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 no. Uh, Corey P. Smith. Corey P. Smith. Mm. What is uh, Corey P. Smith, he's a credit guru. He's a very, uh, he called with the business credit, personal credit, you no know, uh, establishing shell corporations, foreign entities, uh, you know. For uh, sure. Uh, yeah, things like that. He called. Yeah, believe that. Yeah, he sounds black. He's a black dude. He got three uh three uh homeless people, like I think like two point five million dollars in credit, and uh Fed Feds came and tried to indict him, but it was all legal within the lines of the law, and it was just immoral. It wasn't illegal. It was immoral, and that's what a particular uh, race of people do: is things that are immoral but within the lines of the law. Yep, Corey P. That's real. If you were gonna be in any type of movie, what would it be? Uh, uh gangster movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> would you end up being the boss, or you uh, just like you know what I'm saying? I end up being the hitman. Mm. Hitman. 
He said he going to see you. Walking he, through. He's coming through. So he called him. <coughs> that's LZ over there. Watch out. Yeah. That's different. I ain't never been a hitman for sure. Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up in the morning? Thank God that I'm still here. And I like to see my wife right next to me. That's always a blessing. If my son and my wife in the bed with me, and that's like, man, that's the first, that's really the first thing I think about. Mm -hmm. My son and my wife in the bed. You give a shout out real quick? Yeah, shout out to my wife, shout out to little, little baby here. You feel me? Yeah. You little know. illusion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> baby ice pack. Baby ice pack. Baby ice pack. Baby here. You feel me? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, how to code? Hot. Emos or pie? Pie. Wow. You talking about the pizza place on Delmore? Yeah. Delmar? yeah. Emos, I ate so much emos growing up, my uncle hustled. I'm man. not so, mad at you. Listen, bro, I had enough emos. I don't think emos is that good. I like emos. It's my, cool. Emos, right? You said emos or pie. Yeah. yeah. You talking about pie to deep dressed pizza? Yeah. I mean, I don't understand. Like, if I'm taking my wife somewhere, or I'm taking her, I'm going somewhere, bro. I mean, that's could probably give you that type of atmosphere, too. Emos like the. The hood. Yeah, exactly. You said emos or pie. Yeah. I like to chill and sit in pie before I do. I feel, I feel all right. Like on some, what y'all saying? Like, I feel you. I feel you. you know, no, I feel you. The vibe and pie. Emos, I, I can do emos. That's yeah. cool. I ain't tripping up and saying you said pie. I'm not mad because I'm not an emo. He ain't an emo. No, but I'm an emo fan. Let's not get that wrong. Emos is good. I'm an emo. You feel me? But it's not the first thing I choose. I did change. I did And you got it depends on what type of mood I'm in, man. Yeah. Late night chilling, really on the rush. Hey, come here, emo. Especially one off Hampton. By the zoo. Yep. That's yep, a plug. Yep, hey. yep. That's a plug. They got Jason Tatum. They got Jason Tatum being a uh, whole. Hey, at least is good too, though. That's fine. On too. the south side? Grab boys. Grab boys. Yes. When you talk to you, yes. that shit yeah. is fire. <laughs> no, grab Woo. boys, I want to say, dang, it's right by Roosevelt. Yeah. they right across the street. Yep. Facts. Big facts. What's your favorite pair of shoes of all time? Dang. Mm. Yeah, it's just like yep. that. It's yep. like that. I don't know. Favorite right shoes out there? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the questions. I say Creative Ricks. I had these perfect Creative Ricks. Why? Hey. I'm saying You took it back. You said I'm not like yeah, that. No, no, that's real. Bro, bro. That's bro, bro. bro. Them hot top Creative Ricks, bro. Was, yeah. with the, they was the high top Creative Ricks boots, boots with them. Uh, with them uh, hot top Creative Ricks boots with the space tops. Though. But they snapped on and off. I got them off of Nordstrom's. I promise you I was in Houston and somebody was like, Hey man, where you get those from? I'm like, no, bro. These are creative wrecks. You think they, you think they don't say goodbye or something? No, bro. These are supposed to be a hundred, one hundred seventy-five. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Okay. I never creative wrecks yeah. is hard though. They work. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm not mad at them. Y'all, y'all know they was popping back then. Yeah, they were. They were. no, no, that's why I said, ooh, yeah, no, I, I didn't even go there. Yeah, that, 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 that was an error. That was a nice little error. That's a nice little error. What's your favorite drink? Favorite drink, Grand Marnier. Ooh. What I take now, what's up? Now, what's up? I talk. Boy! Oh, that's, that's, hey, that's boy. boss. That's boss, bro. That's boss. Hey. I like, bro. I like a little tang to it. No, oh. we can't do that. Hey, listen. <laughs> How you make yours? Hey, straight, straight warm. Room temperature. What? Okay. Fuck you mean? Fuck you mean, bro. That's and that was, it was handed down to me from a straight. You know, a straight player, rich ass player. Oh, God! Dude, hey, in you, the strip club. I didn't spend a dime. Me and my partners, we ain't spend a dime, man. Man, man uh, bro, he already had his self established. Like, chick just older gentleman. Yeah. Boy, hey, man, look, my wife, what y'all on? You was like, right here, Grandma Ye. Whole night, we like, what is this, is, man? Boy, that Grandma Ye. Grandma Ye. Every time you order it, Watch how watch how people look when you order it. Hey, it is. I promise you, it's a whole nother ball game. I get Nick, that. I Nick, ordered before Nick, when you, you order a Johnny Walker. It's like a Johnny who? No, I ain't know Johnny Walker. Yeah, Johnny Walker. That's guy. Right. Every time I'm like, mm -hmm. we going out, I'm like, bro, I need Grandma Ye. Grandma Ye. Grandma, Grandma Ye. Grandma Ye. strong. Yeah, they order French connection. You're, not, you're supposed to sip it. You're supposed yeah, not right. supposed to. But it's they, strong. I heard they I talk. Hennessy. Hennessy. I hate Hennessy. I hate it. I fuck with Hennessy. Y'all. That was really what I was drinking before Grandma. Yeah, and I will I'm glad drink try. Hennessy because I know that's what people yeah. preference is or Remy. I just had this Ciroc. Man, it was some uh Ciroc that was uh I don't know if it was cognac. Yeah, that BSOP. Yeah, they got some cognac yeah. uh that shit tastes like NJ. I don't know, bro. I just had I don't I'm not a drinker for real, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Let's teach us all. Grandma, yeah. 
Teach yourself. I say it as a <laughs> What's your favorite sports team? It was the Rams. They broke my heart. I really don't have a favorite sports team. Uh, I gotta say, I don't have a favorite sports team. Yeah, bring it. It's like a little XFL team coming. The yeah. Battle Hawks. You gotta be in the it's gonna be some weak ass shit. We always get some weak ass. You just gotta support it. You know what I'm saying? Make it I'm gonna support it. Why? Because they're from here. Exactly. Look what the Rams did to us. They broke our heart. But they not oh. from here. Okay, you gotta relax. They, we made them. No, we yeah. didn't make them. We did. Well, they were they, made no, no, no. and created. So what are we supposed to say? They good, got to St. Louis and they said, they you know what? We gotta produce here. Okay. They said, hey, we, we need something else. We need something else. the last few years to do what? Nothing. I don't, well, I don't know about the sports, bro. All I know, when I was when I was a Rams fan, the Kirk Warner fan, the shit yeah. was Super Bowl status. It's facts. Then they, yeah. they stopped spending money to, for motherfuckers to come here, bro. Next thing I know, they in LA and they winning shit, going to the playoffs. And we, had, and we and, and y'all ain't switched too much of the talent up. I hate <laughs> a nigga that's still a Rams fan. From the loop. I'm dead serious, man. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. If you're a Rams fan, I know one. And I hope you hear this, man. You on my Facebook. You used to talk to my you used to talk to my wife friend. You know who you are. <laughs> the fuck, man? Man, take that up. take that monkey suit off, bro. It's time to get this shit over with. I'm hollering. Which if you could have a superpower, what would it be? To read people's minds. It's just a certain mentality. If you did a rap battle, you'd be like, I already know what you're gonna say about me, bro. <laughs> if you if you did a rap battle, you'd be like, I already know what you're gonna say about me. That's not true. You can't say this. Like, I'm just saying. Go ahead say we're gonna say it already. You're gonna take the whole thing away. To repeat mine. Dang. You know what? I, I probably you. would not want that just because I probably, as long as I can cut it off at times. Because I don't want to be that like honest. Like with SX? Yeah, I don't, I don't want people that. I don't want that level of honesty, bro. <laughs> yeah, we really ain't fucking with it, bro. Like, think about it, bro. <laughs> think about it, bro. Do you really have that level of honesty? Hey, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm the type of nigga that I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, Fuck no, nah, bro. Shit. It'll be hurting you, bro. Like, like, oh, look, look, look. No. I, like, based off me, like, I'm I'm one of the people I ask, you want the truth or the lie? When people ask a certain question, and it's like one of those, you know those questions, you like, all right, come on now. And I ask people, I'm like, you want the truth or the lie? If I, if you say the lie, I'm going to give you the truth in that. So I'm going to come up with something different. But just know the opposite of whatever the fuck I said is the truth. So now you can got the truth the easy way for you. Or I can just give it to you straight like that. I ain't got time to play no sugarcoating. I'm a great dude. I'm genuine. I fuck with people. I help dude. people. But like at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I'm giving you straight blunt. Just straight, just like this. You know, if I had superpower. You know, yeah, I'll probably you know want to be able to. Uh, like a superpower, like that means like, I, means like I can be like Cyclops. And, like, you asked the question. Out. Talk to him. <laughs> you just talk to him. I, I, I he had to clarify himself. Clarify. Like, yeah, I'm like superpower. Yeah. Anything, superpower. You can turn water into wine. <laughs> like whatever you want to do. You can be Superman right now. You know, you know with one power. <laughs> if I had a superpower, I'd probably be, if I could fly. See? Nigga, you wanna fly a black man flying? Right. The here. fuck your head. Bro, you gonna stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> this, the fuck? this nigga flying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see y'all when I get there. You know what I mean? Hey. I mean, anybody <laughs> else flying that shit would probably fly like, oh, you're the Chinese dude, he just flew, he just flew. Hey, that is true, though. Oh, that is man. true. What happened? Oh, the Chinese man, he just flew. He just flew. This nigga flying. <laughs> I'm dead serious, bro. We can't do shit like that. We can't have the old time. <laughs> ah, we need shit. We, we can need subtle talent. <laughs> yeah. We need subtle talent. We don't just feel like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. We need some shit we, we keep ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Hey, this nigga can read people's thoughts. Like, we need some shit like that. This nigga we need to know like where's the truth gonna be in that moment. That's why I want to read. I can uh, I can hear it now. This nigga flying. This nigga oh, flying. <laughs> All right, if you were stuck on an island with three things, what would you bring? Three things. Three things. Three things. <laughs> now listen. Now this gonna be fun. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> funny. 
If I was stuck on an island, you tell me I'm gonna be with this thing. Three. That's all you got. Three, bro. And you gotta make, you gotta survive. So it's your world. On okay. three things. What do you need? This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> a boat. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Shit. It's your. It's your world. What you bring? You got a boat. Hold on. Listen. It is it endless? I yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I, can I get off the island? I just gotta stay on the island. Cause I'm getting some shit to get off the island. I'm bringing an airplane. Uh, uh, that, the fuck he is is <laughs> He gonna have how you gonna get an airplane if you don't know how to drive it or fly it? He, that's that's the issue. JB, that shit gonna go down in the water. Limiting you. Well, shit, you told me I'm trapped on this island. I'm a, I'm gonna trap my chances. And you gonna die because the plane? How you gonna get off the plane? I'm gonna tell you the three things I'm bring. Bro, I'm mad as fuck. I don't want shit. Like I'm dead. I'm trapped on this island. Because he keeping you on this damn island. Yeah, like bro. And you gotta get off. And I'm telling you, because look, I'm, I gotta get off. Yeah. Well, I mean, you ain't like I, so. Look, I brought I brought a plane because I actually I, I I know how to fly. Like I'm learning how to fly. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna bring me a plane. Hit. You did for real? Yeah. That's what you said you was gonna bring. Yeah. Well, I'm bringing it too. So he just said, do you know? Well, how to fly. I played the, you remember them games? Oh God! Oh, God. No, no, no. You can't say that. You can't say that. We don't know. They, 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 they don't have a certificate. That so. Fuck. If, if my life depended on it, I'm betting on myself to learn. I'm going to say something I'm not going to say, but bro, everybody that ever flew a plane and got the mission handled was not a fucking trained pilot. You I'm going to try on chances. <laughs> that mother's going to go. He bring the plane. Because you got to have, first of all, you got to have a landing spot. Okay, okay. Or, or take off. That's all that. Okay. Where you going to take off at? Hey, now, a, I like that video. The whole plane, I'm Gucci. I'm good. Oh, if no, I start I'm going down and I got a parachute, I'm out of here because it's all coming with the plane. Man, I'm bringing. You go, if you got a parachute, you gonna fall right back into the water. Damn, bro. With what? He disrespected, bro. You know how I'm bringing with me the president, because I know they gonna come rescue his ass. I'm all right, all right, yeah. 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 the president. Yeah. I know they yeah. gonna come yeah. his ass. That's solid. Yeah. Niggas ain't thought of that. If you can work with anybody dead or alive, who would it be? And yeah. there's no language barriers. No language barriers, that's real. No language barriers, dead or alive. It'll be Gandhi. I like that. That's I tough. Like that. mm -hmm. That's tough. Somebody say Mandela, man. Uh -huh. Nelson. Gandhi. Uh, which are better for you? What do you like better, actually? Weekends or weekdays? Weekdays. Because everyone's occupied. The regular worker. The regular right? worker, so occupied. So you Not working be like that, but I'm saying the regular person I got. My son in school, you know, my lady, she occupied. I'm grinding. I'm in grind mode. Uh -huh. None of my, no, none is violent for my time, but what I prioritize. Then, you know, I sacrifice when they available, but if they unavailable, it's a no brain. It's grind time. Mm hmm I like that. That's yes. facts. I like that. Dave. Dave. Sheesh, man. The president ain't gonna get me off that island. Hey, bro, like, when you, when you said it, I'm like, off that island. But no, wait to, not Trump, though, because they may... They let me let us. They might let, let him yeah, let him no, stay. I ain't need I mean yeah. like a, a real studious president. Like put if you had Obama with you, you getting off the island. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. I don't like Obama though. Oh. Hey. Oh, I'm. So, no, you're fine. Oh, yeah. you can't. I'm not saying I don't like him. Yo, know, he's decent. He's okay. You I know, you like that. Obama. He's Obama. He's cool. Then. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad. You know, I'm really like him. So we got a new segment right there we do. Okay. And it's like when you posted this, what did you mean? So mm -hmm. we're gonna show this image on the screen. You feel me? You know we had you on the board, right? Yes. I ain't on the board. Right there. The dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's cool. Thanks. So like I said, we you know what I'm saying? So the image gonna show up there. So when you posted this, what did you mean? Okay, I see. I meant I really meant that to somebody. <laughs> but uh 
you know, I'm just a stand-up guy, man. I really am a stand-up guy. You know, I've been through a lot out here, man. So I'm always a stand-up guy, and you know, that's that's real adamant. People, men are real emotional over women, you know. They're so emotional over women that they will jump the gun over speculations to question you about shit that they have no hard evidence over a hunch. You know, I've seen it repeated times where a, a male would approach you over some shit that he have a hunch, even if he does it jokingly, passively, in a passive manner, but he still really means it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, hey, now you, you dang, bro, cause you, you like so-and-so, she like so-and-so. No, that's a passive manner of you actually telling me that she's hands off if you'd like me to keep my hands off of her. Mm -hmm. But you're asking me that, but okay. But you don't want to joke and play about this dude over here that owe you this money for real. Like, I know a lot of dudes that owe a lot of money out here, you know. On another tip, like, I know it's guys out here that, that owe money. Nigga will not approach you about some money, uh, ask you passively about some money you owe, but won't That's be true. so That's aggressive. True. And ask you about if they owe you, you owe me some money, twenty dollars, fifty dollars. I know people that just, just let that slide. Keep letting somebody borrow money and be on the money. You know, they will most definitely ask you about a female. Be hey man, do you know so and so? Or be lying over some speculation. I'm a player at a point in my life. I was a player, like a real deal player. I seen niggas get emotional over women every time. It don't matter. Women don't have any wage on them. So they're always casualties in war when it comes to women if they're not loyal to their man. You know what I'm saying? I fell victim to that. But I always speak up when it comes to somebody owing me some money. Somebody trying to play me about some money. That's never been me. A woman, that's going to be me getting emotional and approaching a man over a woman. I've never done it. I don't do that. I'm not finna come to nobody and ask them about my wife. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go ask her. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna put two and two together based on how she responded to me. I'm not finna degrade myself and go ask no man about no woman. Mm -hmm. But I will ask you if you owe me $20. Mm -hmm. And then I'll press you about $20 that you owe me before I come ask you, hey, you know what, what? That's not respectable. But you niggas do it, they do it, you know, and it's acceptable. It's part of the game, but that's not how I was raised. And that's something that I hold very highly, how I deal with women and other gentlemen. Because that's something that I know niggas not solid on. Niggas very sensitive and emotional when it comes to women. I'm married now, so I'm not a part of that, you know, that them games and shit. But I know that it's still a game. It's a very game. And I won the game hella times. Lost a couple. But I won hell of times. Ain't no one of them get none off of me. I won hell of times. I know niggas that hate my guts. I took a lot of W. I took some L's. We all, all players take L's, but That's facts. I ain't never been no lame over no female. No, no female on me. And I always gonna press you by my money too. I weigh, you know, I ain't, I don't weigh the most. I ain't the biggest in stature, but I'm gonna press you about something that you owe me, and that's mine. Yep. Yeah. That part. You know? That part. Okay. But shit, you got any events coming up? Yeah, I got some events coming up. Um, I got some going on with Street Status DVD, so y'all gotta stay posted with that. It's gonna be, you know, I just came off the John John battle. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's so, hard. Mm hmm. Cold, cold. So, check the footage out. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's on the link. And then, um, yeah, so I wanted to jump back in with O, so I got something going on with him. And then I was just working with uh, another league. To try to get a bigger, uh, to get a big little look, big platform battle, and uh, that's something I'm still negotiating. But those are two things. I'm working on a mixtape with uh, a mixtape with uh, somebody, you know, with, with somebody who I really, really fuck with. It's a big name in the loop, but it's a surprise. So it's gonna be a lot going on this first quarter for me. Them tracks you sent those to? No, nah, those are like. The tracks I sent over to you, some things we just gonna shoot on that I've been procrastinating oh, over. Right. Everything gonna be fresh. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be in the studio for like the next 30 days, whipping up, coming out with like a seven song EP type ordeal. All original tracks. I'm about to hop on. I'm gonna get a Hey, go ahead, man. What's up? Hey, 
I might get it. I might get it. I might get it. I might get it. Yeah. Can you rap for real? Yeah, he actually can. Fine. Fine. Yeah. He's doing it. Yeah. He do the bass. What? You play bass, the yeah. drums. Yeah. You know? yeah. What's the what I'm saying? We'll see. We'll talk about it. But I'm more so, bro. Like, since then, since I started battling, real talk, me and my wife, we started a few companies, bro. Mm. And we uh, wholesale houses. We've already wholesaled a couple of houses. In, uh, one in Maplewood, one in Belleville. You know, we've personally drawn up the contracts, no lawyers included. We've closed on the houses, did uh, silent closings. You know, so it's really like, as far as like handling business and paperwork, I always, I've been cold with it. Credit repair, you know, uh, credit repair, removing public records, uh, what you need, you know, anything like with paperwork, so this battle stuff be like this small to me mm -hmm. as far as like the effort that it take, the intellectual capacity it take to really manage this stuff, it's just a matter of being engaged. So you, do, you do credit repair. Man, heck, can't nobody fuck with me on no credit repair. In yeah. St. Louis, this close by where you can reach out and touch, can't I mean, nobody I mean, fuck with me close by. If they do, they're doing something illegal. Mm -hmm. And I could, I'm telling you. Let's talk prices a little bit. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah, yeah, I'm that man. That's what Corey P. Smith. Shout out to Corey P. Smith. Shout out. Yeah. As far as credit repair, I'm that. I'm better in credit repair than I am in battle. That's real. Than any battle. As far as your best battle rapper, who you think your best battle rapper? I'm ten times better than him in credit repair. <laughs> Over here, fuck right. this battle rap right. shit. Yeah. Hey, I'll I'm get God. you some high Let limit. Let them know. You got multi talents. Yeah, bro. I you, get you, you some. What you mean? I get you some high limit cards. I take everything off your credit. Let's get it. Like you getting excited. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> oh God! So it's like, hey, what you mean? Yeah, I like to learn how to fish for myself in all avenues, bro. This shit ain't just no one dimensional. Battle rap is like got a bass this time. That's the start, but yeah, man, that's it. What I do, man. Yeah. At, you could, you could. Everybody that was around me, any battle rapper that was mm -hmm. close by me. They know how I get down, man. They, so that's why when I ever hear any type of narrative drawn about me, I know it don't match me. They be like crazy. That's wild. I was the first person to show these guys ten thousand dollars in Jib's, the uh, Jib's basement, DJ hey. Beast's basement. I heard there was a camera down there. I went down there with ten thousand dollars. Hey, back in like two thousand and nine, I was a little kid. <laughs> a little kid with all that money. Damn I'm right. telling you, they weren't paying me like that either. They weren't paying me like that back then. I promise you, on the you south side of Merrimack, yeah, I was involved with a lot. I had a lot going on when I was very hungry back then. Damn right. Yeah, I wasn't so yeah. humble. Like, I wasn't so humble back then. You know what I mean? Like, I'm humble now. I talk. I'm real humble, though. Not on my Instagram, though. I've been going <laughs> crazy, but right now, for real, get up close on me, man. I'm humble. I don't Your like profile picture fired up. Yeah. Shout out to yeah, you. I did. Yeah. Shout out to the just yeah. living moment. I just got some more work right now about to I think I'm man, I'm actually I got the best look. The battle rappers, you no lie. Smack, URL, Beasley, you guys know it. I got the best look, bro. None of these niggas got that type of look like me. You could force it, they force it, I promise you. I know that. Confident in saying that now, and I say it out of my mouth, man. I got the look, I'm the coolest nigga in this shit, man. Ain't another nigga that you gonna put. I do a gap, man. Give me a fucking gap sponsorship or fucking DKNY, one of them motherfucking car you know the not the conventional ones, like a Macy's. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll be a fucking Macy's model. My nigga be on the billboard like yep. I got him. Like you hear me like hey. Exactly. If you ain't shopping, you ain't ready. Yo, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck you mean. Yeah. Fuck you mean, man. Okay. It makes sense, Mr. You know what I'm saying? Get it in. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, man, we appreciate you being on the podcast. Definitely a pleasure. Man, yep. a pleasure. This is Young Ill, aka, you know, Ice Pack. Ice Pack Ill Chill, who you know, cool the niggas smack. I get paid to make a fool of niggas. Ooh. Fly Fam, Y U N G I L L 314 on our social channels. Mr. Who is this nigga? Mr. Mr. Boat. <laughs> <laughs>